Welcome to another episode of The Clever Dev. Today what we are going to look at is just an extraordinarily deep dive on the MUI form control component. So not forms in a bigger sense, although of course we're going to have a form in here and some subcomponents, but it's really looking at how form control can uh, be used for layout, although it's not the ideal candidate for that, um, looking into some of the error states and the disabled state. As usual, I have some default styling in place and some default code in place uh, to speed up this video. So we have a paper component inside of a form, and what we're going to do is we're going to create three different form control sections. Um, each form control will wrap a pair of components in uh, a row in the intro that we saw there. So for the second and third form control, I've got some code that I already have in place. Uh, that just to speed things up, but for the first one what we're going to do is we will build it from scratch. So um, I will use a form control and show you how you can do some layout with it. Uh, the form group is really the ideal candidate for that, but that adds an extra div in the DOM. So if you didn't want that extra div, then you could definitely just use the SX prop on our form, on our form control, give it display flex, and we'll dive into all that. So anyway, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this form control in place. Uh, there's some interesting, there are some interesting props on it uh, for margin, color, variant, etc. Um, right now I'm going to not add those because really without any interior content, without any children components, then there's just not a lot to see. So what I'm going to do is get those children components in there. Uh, I'm going to add a select and inside of here I will say uh, score data, we can see the score data that we have up here. Um, I'll map over that. So let's add that dot map. I'll say score value. And let's see. As usual, we will do our arrow, com our arrow function here. And let's say return menu item. score value and also have it display text of score value. So this value here, if we um, if we're going to take this uh, menu item that's selected and use it for something, then um, you know maybe we have a state variable. That's what that's what this is here for. So just setting it up for whatever we may choose to do in this video. So anyway I've got this select in here and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a minimum width. Just always a good starting starting thing to do. Actually, I'll just say width of 300. Could say min width, but I'll just say width. And let's give it a text field as a sibling. And I already have all of my imports in here, so I'm not having to deal with any of that. And give that a width of 300. So let's see where we are now. All right. So as you can see, our layout is not great, um, but we do have functionality. Always a good first step. So let's go back over to our code and let's just get a little bit more styling on these components here. So I will say, I'm gonna drop this select down, get a little bit of formatting too. Say label equals score. And I have a great video on how to use this select component, a really deep video on it, so I'm not going to spend too much time here, but I do want it to just be cleaned up a little bit. I don't want our drop down to cover up a bunch of stuff, so I'm going to add paper props here inside of menu props, and I'm going to say um, you're going to have a max height of 200. So there we go. And so I hit my K instead of my L for that label. And so we're pretty much done with our select here. There's something interesting that I'll add and our form control will impact it. And that is the input label. And this actually plays with the select component. So it's kind of interesting how MUI has done this. I'm struggling to type and talk today. Um, for now, actually, I'm not gonna add any SX values to our input label. Uh, I'm just going to give it score. 
here. And you'll see a kind of a cool thing here. Let's see. So you see how score is just sitting nicely inside of here. Let's go back and remove this input label. And you'll see that score disappears. So let's see what's going on there. And if we might have any trouble later when we do our um, display flex, and especially if we do any kind of uh, justify content. So let's see, we have this label. So that is the input label that we are looking at. And we have this div, which is the outer uh, div on our select or really the root div on our select. So let's take a look at this form label. So I can tell that this is the form label because it says input label as part of the class name right there. So what they do is they add this left value of zero to the label anytime that it is within a um, anytime that it's within a form control. So that's a cool thing because that makes it just lay nicely in the select. Let's go up here to our form control and really get to the meat of what I'm doing with this section, which is to get a little bit of um, layout accomplished here. So we've got display of flex on this thing. And to show off some of the problems, then um, I will say justify content space around. So we've got that. And I'll also say flex direction of row. And that, and, um, let's see how that's looking. Not so great, right? Let's just refresh that. Got to have all your commas. And an interesting thing here, so I have a min width on this paper component. If I didn't have that, then this uh, display flex would not really accomplish anything because it wouldn't have any room to grow into. And I'll show that real fast. There we go. There we go. Um, but you can see the problem here. So let's look at this first. So that label is still set to a, um, a left value of zero. So if it doesn't have that, then we're still in trouble because it's, um, well, even taking off that position absolute. Then the space around on our form control is being applied to all three of these components evenly or equally. And so they've all three got space around. And that's also not what we want. So I'll show you how to mitigate that. Uh, but before we do that, let me strip this width off of our paper component. So you can see that now um, there's no room for that space around. So if you ever run into that, if you're ever trying to use space around or even space between, and it's just not making any space, uh, probably you're missing a width somewhere that will um, make sure that there's actually a little bit of room to have space in between or around. Anyway, so let's fix this input label here. So what we need to do is we need to strip off the left value on it. So I'll just say left of auto. That's not going to be enough though. So that makes it not aligned way over here, but instead it's just sitting in the middle. Not what we want. So the next thing that we need to do is we actually, if we just wrap these both in a box, but the input label and the select, then what that's going to do, and let me uh, let me get a little bit of formatting on there so it looks a little nicer. So what this is going to do is it's going to take the justify content um, or the flex really altogether, the flex on this form control. It's going to apply that flex to the box and to the text field because those are the two direct descendants or the two direct children of the form control. So inside of our box, then we can get our input label into the proper spot um, to have it sitting inside of our input. So like this. So that's all it takes is just the, just those two little hacks on there to uh, get that all aligned nicely. So I mentioned that the form group is really the ideal candidate, especially if you have your tags on there, that always helps. The form group's the ideal candidate here. Uh, instead of the form control. And I'll show you why. So let's just comment out that form control SX styling. And I'll say form group row. And then we can even say, I'll probably need the SX prop for this, but let's give it a try. 
Let's see if justify content is a prop on here. It looks like it's not. Sometimes it is, like the stack component in MUI v5, and this is, of course, MUI v5 code, but the stack component has justify content as an actual prop on it, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, space around. So I bet that this won't be quite what we're looking for. So now what's going on is that our form control that wraps the form group is not given a max width, uh, and so it's not expanding to take the entire width available. So let's go in here and use an actual prop of, that's called full width, a simple prop on form control. Like I, I mentioned, there's a couple of useful props that just deal with the sizing. Um, so full width is one of those, and let's see, there we go. So that's one nice thing is that our form group really just takes all this code, just that row prop and then justify content space around to get the exact same, and of course having a prop here, but to get the exact same um, styling applied. However, we do see now that there's one more div in the DOM, so it's really kind of 50-50 um, on which is better. If you want a really lean, a really lean rendering of your app, then I would suggest maybe you ditch the form group and just stick with this form control with an SX on it. But I will leave the form group commented out. And this is a good time to mention that there is a link to all this code in the video details. And also, I actually just this week um, released a my first ever MUI course on Udemy. And so definitely check that out. I'll have, if possible, I'll have a coupon in the video details, but at the very least, I'll have a link to that. So if you're getting a ton of value from this video and all the MUI videos I've made, then definitely check that out. It is absolutely my best stuff. So anyway, let's keep going with our um, code here. Just a couple more props I'll add to this form control since we're gonna have a few more components in here or a few more form controls, then I will add some margin. So that'll add some top and bottom margin, just some spacing really. And um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that for now. So anyway, that is a pretty quick rundown of form control, building one out and getting some uh, nice layout with it. But what the form control really is all about is the state management of the children components inside of it. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to actually uncomment just this first one for now. So we'll take a look at this form control here and you can see it here right now with no state management on it. This component is a little bit tall so our select over here is kinda kinda tall so it's not the most beautiful looking but anyway notice the color scheme on this right now but let's go in and just take a quick look at what the form control really does. Let's add an error state to this. So there's a couple props that control state. The two I'll look at are error and disabled. So on this first one, I've added error here. And it's a pretty cool thing. So immediately uh, we get just a pop of color that notifies the user of this UI that something's not right, at least with these components. And uh, they're still interactive. They can still be used. Um, however, something's not right, and that would prompt the user to investigate more. Um, another thing I'll mention is up here I used a text field, and I will actually uh, I'll actually take that and swap it out briefly for this form group here, because I want to show you something. So we've got a text field down here now. So notice this text field doesn't have any color or anything doesn't look like it's in an error state. So the reason for that is because it's not. Now text fields have a compositional aspect to them. That means they're composed uh, of several other MUI components. And the topmost one, as we can see from the div here, is that the text field has, uh, at its root level, another form control. So the wrapping form control here, uh, which we can see here in the DOM, based on this class, that wrapping form control has an error state on it, but that is not being applied to this form control. So what you might wanna do uh, is just use the error prop on the text field here. And we'll see that in a minute. And so now, now we can see that uh, that has that error state on it, but I'm gonna back all that out. And we'll see that a little more clearly down here as well. 
So in this last form control, I'm going to add the disabled state to it. And once again, we've got a select and a text field. So we'll see what that looks like. And so once again, our text field is interactive and no additional styling or anything. But now with the disabled state, then this select is not interactive. So we can add disabled to our text field here. That should make it not interactive, so that's good. But what we're gonna do is go up and just create a const. I'll just say true. And then instead of having the shorthand of true in there, then I am going to pass in this disabled Boolean. So we should have the same net effect, so that's good. Um, this is an ideal candidate for using use state. Um, probably you want it to only be disabled under certain circumstances. Your use state can update and um, disable or enable this text field and this outer form control. Let's say I had more components in here that I wanted to be disabled. Um, anyway, so you can disable or enable all children of this form control at the same time and this text field at the same time with this disabled Boolean, especially if you use the use state react hook. Anyway, I hope that this video was extremely helpful and definitely check out uh, some of the 40 plus MUI videos that I've made so far um, and check out a link to my site where I've got over 100 MUI articles and that is Smart Depreneur that's in the video details.